Yeah. All right. Well, we see folks checking in and coming on. Appreciate y'all being there and uh, look forward to sharing some time with you this evening. Let's go ahead and pray and we'll go to the Lord and just ask him to direct our you, steps Jesus. today. Father, we're thankful for the opportunity to be able to share your word, God, to share life. Father, Lord, with our family and friends, we just pray your blessing over them today. And Lord, just open our hearts to you, God, and our minds. And Father, let us be conduits that you can flow through. And we thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, I have to say, last night we were watching a little bit of Andy Griffith. Can you imagine? <laughs> that's obviously it's one of our very favorites. And we watched an episode last night where Andy was disappointed. And when we got in bed last night, he said, I know what we're going to talk about tomorrow. It was Opie uh, wasn't acting right. He'd lost in a race. And because he didn't win the medal, he didn't, he wouldn't celebrate anyone else. And so I talked to, uh, we were talking and I told Deb, I said, you know, I said, said, sometimes we need to learn how to manage expectations. Yeah, that's right. And uh, we get disappointed, don't we? Yeah, well, you know, expectations, it means to twist a cord. This is what it means in the Greek. Um, to twist a cord, to bind together, to look patiently, a thing look forward to. Sometimes we can set our expectations really high. And yeah, I thought about this scripture in Psalms 5 and 3. David said, my voice shall you hear in the morning. Amen. In the morning will I direct my prayer to you, and I will look up. So everybody say, look up. Look up. Look up there means to peer into the distance. Like you have great expectations that something is coming. You know, when you talk about expectations and to twist or bind like a cord, Sometimes what happens is we, we want something so bad and we get so wrapped up in it yeah. that when it doesn't happen the way we want it to happen, then we become disappointed and we have, uh, we, we, you know, our, our expectations are shattered. Even people when they get married, you know, in, in your married life, when you marry, and if you have high expectations of your spouse mm -hmm. and they're not living up to that, you've got to be careful because you can create a world that's impossible for them to live in. Yeah. And so you, you need to have high expectations from yourself, but not, have, not put those on someone else. We just need to be the best we can be for God. Right. So it means to cheerfully expect. When you look up, you cheerfully expect. That's in the, the waiting. Um, to wait cheerfully and to expect. So... When, when we say disappointed, because that's what sparked it last night when we were watching that. Right. Um, disappointed. Everybody say disappointed. Disappointed. Because appointed, you're being appointed, which means something predetermined that we get in our mind that something's predetermined that's going to happen. Um, but your appointed is dissed. Okay, so now we say disappointed. So disappointed there means failed expectations. And so I was uh, immediately thought of this scripture in Psalm 62 and 5 when David said, My soul um, wait only on God, for my expectation is from Him. Amen. When we're looking for Him, his, our expectation on God and not putting it so high in someone else, then it's the right place. And that means, okay, I'm going to wait on you, Lord. I'm going to cheerfully expect. But so, go ahead. The other thing is, is that when, when your expectation is, is in God, you have to make sure that your expectation is also in sync with the will of God. Because sometimes what we want and what God wants for us may be two different things. And you have to understand that God always wants the best for us, but we can, we, we can get uh, disappointed when our expectations are not falling in line with his will. There's a word, you know, in Proverbs, it tells us to, uh, he, he tells us that we're supposed to acknowledge him in all of our ways and he'll direct our path. But if we've already made up our mind before we go to him and, yeah. and what we do is say, okay, God, I, I, I made up my mind. I'm going to do this. I thought I'd just acknowledge you and let you know. Yes. That's not what he's talking about. He's talking about seeking him for the will of your life. Otherwise, plans will always be disappointed yeah, if absolutely. we don't take counsel in right. Him. Well, so what are some things that um, we can be disappointed in and say our expectations have, have fallen, have failed? 
So one I was thinking of is circumstances, maybe what you're going through right now that, you know, we didn't, we didn't even predetermine right. this would happen. Yeah. And everybody's plans have been changed in an instant. I mean, you may have had a vacation scheduled. You may have yeah. had uh, a, a birthday schedule. Oh, we've, yes. we've seen yes. a lot of people driving, you know, by in, in cars yeah. and, you know, wishing happy birthday and going by the house and honking because they can't have their traditional party. And, and if it's your birthday, you know, that can be really disappointing to you. And, and it, your expectations are kind of shattered because you'd hope for a gathering and a party. Yes. But, you know, you just have to keep it all in God's hands and he'll help you manage those expectations. I was thinking, because we saw my niece, uh, she had a birthday. And so we, we saw that she was living, she lived, I guess, out in the country. Right. But there was a big parade of cars that had signs and she just began to weep because they did make the effort, even though yeah. she expected, I'm sure, had not predetermined that that would take place. Well, yeah, like she was like even, they could all get yeah. together and hug and just have a good time, but she it was, was still an effort she, made. She had even made a statement. She said, man, this is going to be a weird birthday, you know, no, yeah. no party, no connections, you know, but it turned out to be a beautiful party or a beautiful birthday. It, it wasn't what she was expecting but see, when, it, our, when we allow God to manage our expectations instead of trying to make it happen ourselves, uh, he knows how to do it right. Well, uh, if you have your paper and pen, your tablet and pen, just I hope you're jotting some of these scriptures down. But 2 Corinthians 4, 8 through 9, and then we're going to jump down from 16 to 18. And he said, we are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. Um, persecuted but not forsaken. I, I said Perplexed. that wrong. We're troubled on every side, but yet not, not, distra distra not distressed. distressed. Perplexed. Perplexed. Everybody say perplexed, perplexed, but not in despair. We're going to go back to troubled means pressure. You're right. experiencing some pressure. Okay, so we're cast down but not destroyed. And then persecuted going, and not persecuted. Yeah, persecuted and not persecuted. <laughs> <laughs> Might ought to put all the scripture on your note here. I may ought to look <laughs> once in a while, right? Okay, so 16 through 18 says, For which cause we faint not, which means to lose heart. For though our outward man perish, our inward man is renewed day by day. And he says, For this light affliction, which is but for a moment, um, work is, works for us a far more and exceeding eternal weight and glory. And then he says, While we look not at the things which are seen, but are not seen. For the things that are seen are temporal. Right. Look, this is all temporary. We're going to get through all of this. But the things that are not seen are eternal. Right. You know, what's your expectation of God? If, if, if your view of God is some, someone in a little box, then your expectations are not going to be what to put your expectations to him. And so that, that's, the, that's the key is make sure that you let him manage those expectations. So once again, we can be disappointed in our, say, <clears throat> in others. And maybe somebody let you down that you, you had high expectations in. Okay, so... And then that can turn into a grudge. Yeah, well, immediately my, my mind went to uh, this, this scripture, Psalms 41 and 9, and David said, My own familiar friend in whom I trusted, who did eat of my bread, lifted up his heel against me. So he felt the betrayal. And some of you have experienced that as well with someone that you trusted. Right. Let's talk about that for a second because that's also, that's a prophetic word or, or that's a prophecy concerning Christ. So it's, it's speaking about Judas. Jesus sat at the table with Judas and Judas would turn on yeah. him. But think about this. Think about how Jesus managed these expectations Jesus, when we talked about this a few nights ago, Jesus washed Judas's feet. Right. In other words, Jesus was willing to forgive, but Judas couldn't find a place of forgiveness because his expectations were not built on God. They were built in his own selfish desires. And because of that... For his own he, agenda. Yeah, and he, he ended up, you, you know how he ended up, he was hanging out you know, literally hanging. He went and hung himself after he denied Christ and betrayed him. He couldn't find that place of repentance because he had never put his dependence on God. 
Um, so then another one is ourselves. We can be disappointed in ourselves. And that, this one can be really tough. And so, you know, I thought about this story and I remember you being disappointed in yourself because, I mean, I remember the look on your face. And so just wanted to share this one with you. This was when we were traveling on the road. But, um, yeah. So I was, I was on my way to Iuka, Mississippi. Uh, we were starting a revival and we were uh, going to arrive at a fellowship meeting that was going on and then we would start the revival that Sunday. So we're driving and it's it's raining and it's dark and and all of a sudden, I, I don't know what happened. Well, I, I understand now, but I didn't then. I, I end up, I, I'm pulling into this place that I think I'm pulling into the church parking lot and I'm not even in the right town. And I, I pull in and when I pull in, I'm thinking, man, where am I at? And I thought, well, this isn't right. And I, I go to back up. And when I go to back up, I end up turning the car. It was raining. I, it was raining. I, yeah, it was raining hard. hard. And, Ground and soft. I, I dropped a wheel off in a mm -hmm. ditch and didn't realize it. And I started to pull forward. And Debbie started, no, 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 no. no. I said, we're but falling. <laughs> I couldn't sense it. My, my, my side of the car was still level. But hers had dipped. And uh, it, it just turned into a mess. And so I could not back out. I couldn't get out. I certainly couldn't go forward because I'd, I'd drop off in this ditch. And so I, I finally, I told him, I said, well, stay here in the car. And I walked across the street. Now it's, you know, it's, it's draining. I, I go across the street into a restaurant and I asked in the restaurant, I said, does anybody have a chain? I said, I've dropped my, in front of my car off in this ditch. I need help getting it out. And they, nobody had a chain. The guy said, I've got a wrecker. And I said, well, I don't need a wrecker. I didn't want that bill. I said, I don't need a wrecker. I just need a chain. And so I, I, I go back across the street. And when I go back across the street, Debbie and the kids are outside but underneath I have to tell awning. you why, yeah, on my side of the story, okay. So uh, our daughter, Bethany, she was probably um, seven at the time. And Jonathan was, our son, was five. And so um, we were all slanted like this, okay? And the car's, car's running. And so Bethany does not want to get back in the car. I mean, we're, we're not going to, you know, well, slide no, down. She, she wanted to get out of it. Yeah, she wanted to get out. And so I opened the car door and I said, honey, it's going to be all right. She's, I said, let's just pray to Jesus. And she said, I think he's sleeping. Yeah. She was just so upset. And But the truth is, how many times have we felt that yes. way? You know, like he's, yes. he's not seeing what's going on. Right. And so her, she was leaning on the door, like uh, the locks. Well, the car was running. And so then I said, well, come on. We'll go across to the to the restaurant where, dad, where your daddy is. And so uh, when we got out, the door shut. Because Jonathan was saying, oh, Come on, Bethany, because he, he was fine with it. You know, he was okay with it. But when we got out, the door shut, and now and it's, they, locked. it's locked. And it's and the, running. And it's running. <laughs> the keys are in the car. And so I, I, I go over there, and Debbie tells me, she said, the car's locked, and keys are in it. And I just turn around and walk back <laughs> over to that restaurant and go to the guy that had the wrecker. And I said, come on, let's get your wrecker. And so... We go to get his record, and he has a, man, it is brand spanking new. And I'm thinking, I'm getting ready to make a payment <laughs> on this record. And so I'm, I'm, I'm just, you know, concerned how much this is going to be. And he starts to, he, he gets the car door open. Then he, he starts to let all this tackle down from that record. I said, look, man, all we need to do is hook a chain yeah. to the back of my car. And I'll come right out of here. And so he does that, and I come right out, and and uh, he, I, I ask how much it is, you know, and I'm, oh, you know, and I think I paid, was it twenty dollars or twenty five yeah, dollars? Like and it was like, oh, thank you, Jesus, you know. And <laughs> and we get on the road. Now you have to understand. By now I'm soaking wet. Muddy. I've got mud all over He's got a my suit on. my shoes and my my suit, suit pants, and and I'm I'm sitting in the car. And we're driving, and I'm just sitting He's there. not saying anything to me. I can just see by the look on his face. He was disappointed in himself because he made the wrong turn. I, I, this is literally what I'm saying to myself. I'm, think, I, I'm praying to God, and I said, God, look, I, I know I'm not the smartest person in the world, 
but I'm not the dumbest either. And I thought, God, I'm not even in the right town. How, how could this happen? And then all of a sudden, Debbie started sharing what happened when she was at the store or at the... Could I share? Yeah, well, I just got to minister with a, with a waitress that was away from God. And, and so... <laughs> and so she, she led this girl back to the Lord. And when she did, then when she told me that, then... It he was, hit the steering it, wheel and he's, he was like, thank you. Yeah, Jesus. and it was like, okay, God, I get it. If, if you need me to drop my car off in a ditch because you want to make sure someone hears about your love and your word, then that's okay with me. And I was, I was all right then. I wasn't disappointed with myself anymore because my expectation had been met in God. Well, what about when you're disappointed in God? And I, I immediately thought of this story when you were 15. Yeah, so, I, you know, I'm sure at some point in your life, you've had something happen that you prayed you about and you, you were trusting God to do something and he didn't do it the way you wanted it done. And then you have to come at, to peace with what happened. And I got disappointed with God. I was 15 years old and my father died. I had prayed, you know, and was believing God that he was going to be healed, but he, he didn't, and he died. And I, I wrestled with that for a long time, and I remember going to God, and I said, how could you do this to me? I'm 15 years old. How could you take my father? And this went on for probably about three weeks with me, you know, crying myself to sleep at night, and, and you know, these questions, you know, basically challenging God. How... How could you let this happen? And I'll never forget the night that the Lord spoke to my heart. And it, it wasn't an audible voice, but it might as well have been. I mean, it, it, it was so distinct in my spirit. And this is what I heard. He said, you ask me to save your father. Mm -hmm. He said, I could have given you your father for another 15 years and you lost him forever. He said, but now, You've got a promise of your father forever. See, during that ordeal with my father's health, he surrendered his heart to God. It's the first time I saw him pray. And when the Lord spoke that to me, you know what? I, there were no more, no more tears of anger or disappointment. Uh, God but saw now the it was, I, And now I have a great expectation. And it's because I, I was mismanaging my expectations. I had them in the wrong place. But when you surrender to God and, and you, you say, okay, God, look, I, this isn't what I was looking for. It's not what I was asking for. But somewhere in this circumstance, in this situation, you're going to bring good out of this. And he did. He brought my father's salvation through. And I can see even all these that we listed, all the things that, that we didn't understand. We judge oftentimes what we don't understand, but God always brings good out of it. You know, we, a common scripture that we quote is Romans 8 and 28. Right. For um, all things work together for good to them that love God, love the Lord who are called according to his purpose. And I think the biggest thing in that scripture is that you understand that it didn't say that everything that happens is good. He said he works it for He'll good. turn it all around so, for good. So, you know, the uh, losing someone you love isn't, good but he works it for good and he worked it so that i would have him for an eternity and it's important for you to understand that that the circumstance may not be good and the situation like what's going on right now this isn't good but man we've been coming to you guys every night i'm sure some of you are getting tired of this <laughs> i hope not I mean, man pastors invade my living room no, you, know? you know what this has been this has totally been and i i, I think the first time i came, i came on um, I said this, and just to reiterate, look, my ministry has always been out in the marketplace, <laughs> going shopping and, and getting to engage strangers and, and the opportunity to lead them to the Lord. Well, as you know, I haven't had that opportunity. I don't get to do that right now. And so when you were, you were going on here and connecting with you, I was like, I got to tell somebody <laughs> about God. I got to share a scripture or just, you know. It's been therapy for Debbie, <laughs> I promise you. And yes, so, so thank you for joining us each night. But I want to share this scripture, Romans 5 and 5, and this is in the, in the NLT. And he says, And this hope will not lead to disappointment. That's right. For we know how dearly God loves us Amen. because he has given us 
um, his Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with love. And so, you know, when once again, back to Psalms uh, 62 and 5, David said, my soul waits on God alone. Amen. On you alone, Lord, for my expectation is from you. That's why you can peer into the distance and you can say, God, I know good is coming. Good is coming. And then uh, this was... Go ahead and read that. Well, you read it. This is no, I've, got, I've got one I want to share. Yeah, one. Okay. So Philippians 1 and 20, just getting you some, giving you some word tonight. Uh, according to my earnest expectation and my hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but that with all boldness, as always, so now also Christ shall be magnified in my body, whether it be by life or by death, for to me to live is Christ and to Amen. die is gain. So God has a way of taking care of us and we just have to make sure that our expectations are in line with his will and his purposes. You know, I mean, you know, one of my expectations were to be a great opera singer. Oh, wait, you've got to do your Tarzan. <laughs> no, no, do your Tarzan. No, no. I'll do that no, when do we get it. back. No, I can do that when we no, get back. No, he started this so, thing. I... No, I'm not doing it tonight. So what I'm saying is, I'm mismanaging my expectations because I don't have the talent to do that. So it, you have to you you have to make sure that your expectations <laughs> are in line with God. Look, I've seen I'm him because because I've seen him. Well, he's ministering and he'll break out in a song. And I'm telling you, when I first met him, he couldn't carry a tune. And I, I'm not being critical at all. It's just like he couldn't <laughs> yes, hear. <she> <laughs> He couldn't, like I would go, do, re, mi, fa, and, and it, it wouldn't work. But then if he could sing an Elvis song, he would be hey, right on. Or, off the or track like, <laughs> Okay, let's get well, back. Don't be, don't be disappointed. Let's get Because it's in <laughs> there when, when the anointing okay, hits him, here, it comes get, out and it's in tune. Okay. okay, here, look. All right, so here we are. Now you got me off my mind or off my track. All right, so let me talk to you one more time about this expectation. We'll wrap it up here. I think we should wrap it up about five minutes. No, it's okay. it's okay. But here, here's the, you have to understand that everyone has expectation and it, our expectations are not always met the way we want them to right, be. Right. And there's a great scripture in, uh, hold on, I'll tell you where it's at. It's in Romans 8, and I'm going to read verse 8 and 19, 18 and 19, and then uh, 22 to 24. But I'm going to read this in the message uh, because it, it just captures the essence of what Paul is saying here. So this is what it says. That's why I don't think there's any comparison between the present hard times and the coming good times. I want you. I want you to let oh, that sink good. in. That's good. That there's no comparison between the present hard times and the coming good times. Mm. In other words, what we're going through right now has got. It, it's, it's not even temporary. worthy to temporary. be compared to what God is getting ready to do in our lives. That's right. He says the created world itself. Do you, do you understand? The creation has expectation. Listen to this. The created world itself can hardly wait for what's coming next. And then he makes this uh, statement. He said, all around us, we observe a pregnant creation. Hmm. The difficult times of pain throughout the world are simply birth pains. Everybody's going through this right now. Yeah. But these are just birth pains. I believe it's birthing revival. Amen. But it's not only around us, it's within us. The Spirit of God is arousing with us within. We're also feeling the birth pains. These sterile and barren bodies of ours are yearning for full deliverance. That is why waiting does not diminish us any more than waiting diminishes a pregnant mother. Oh, wow, that's good. <laughs> you understand? She knows it's there. Yes. She knows it's coming. That, that waiting, that nine months of waiting doesn't take away from that. She says, we are enlarged in the waiting. Wow. We, of course, don't see what is enlarging us. You can't see the baby inside you, but it's getting bigger and bigger. Wow. We, we don't see what's enlarging us, but the longer we wait, 
the larger we become mm. and the more joyful our expectancy. That's beautiful. I'm telling you, God's got some great things in store for you. So don't be weary and don't grow anxious, but just let him have his way in your life. You rejoice in him right where you're at because he's enlarging you and it's getting bigger and bigger yes, in yes. your spirit and in your heart and he's going to bring it to full term in yes, Jesus name. Yes. We want to pray for you tonight. <clears throat> we love you guys and just believe in God uh, for good things for you. Yes, so if you yes. would just pray with us right now. Father, yes. we thank you, God, for our church family, God, for our friends and family that are watching. Yes, Jesus. We just pray a special anointing on them, God, that you'll hold them and keep them. And God, give them expectation, your expectation. Yes, yes. Let them know that you haven't forgotten that you have not walked away, that Lord, you're growing something in us. Yes, and Jesus. During this time that we're in right now, I know it's a time of waiting and we're tired of waiting, but you're causing something to grow in Ooh, us. And thank there's you, an Jesus. expectancy in yes, our spirit yes. that's going to break yes, out. And when it does, God, we're going to shout it <laughs> from the mountaintop. Thank you, Jesus. So we just shout right thank now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, hallelujah. We praise God for what he's doing. We love you all. Wait, I got something okay. to say. <laughs> Don't go. Say this with me. I'm too blessed to be stressed. I'm too blessed to be stressed. I'm too fine to whine. I'm too fine to whine. I'm too humble to grumble. I'm too humble to grumble. And too anointed to be disappointed. And too anointed Amen. to be disappointed. Amen. And too cute to mute. <laughs> <laughs> This one and can we, go on and we, on. We love you guys. Love we'll see you, you tomorrow night, 6 o'clock. God bless. Bye-bye.